Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Waterfront Wednesday. My name is Corey and I am a Waterfront Planner at the Department of City Planning. Um, and we are joined this week by Maggie Flanagan of Waterfront Alliance. Um, Maggie, do you want to say hello and introduce yourself? Thanks, Corey. I'm Director of Education and Outreach at Waterfront Alliance, where we work together with more than 1,100 Alliance partners to have resilient, revitalized, and accessible coastlines for all communities. That means we want the best of everything on our waterfront, great transportation like ferries, mm -hmm. great jobs in our working waterfront, and of course, access and education like um, youth programs we focus on, as well as a resilient future for our urban coasts. Cool. Well, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, I heard you have an exciting activity for us today. I'd love to share with you our activity called Become an Ecological Engineer. It's based off um, some very simple educational methods using a tray with water. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's amazing goals that you can achieve with activities like this. Um, through these hands-on explorations, young people will be able to understand relationships that actually apply in the real world and on our waterfront, and they're going to be able to develop understandings and vocabulary that will enable all of our communities for ad to advocate for the best of the things that they want on their waterfronts. So, Corey, what kind of a uh, yeah thing? Um, what kind of goals uh, are you working on with DCP that align with these educational efforts? Yeah, so um, at DCP, one of the, you know, one of the things that we're working on the waterfront team um, is working on New York's next uh, comprehensive waterfront plan. Um, comprehensive waterfront plan, you can think of it as kind of like a, a, fr a framework, a blueprint. Um, it's, the, it's the vision for uh, the future of the city's waterfront and the next decade and beyond. Um, and so we're, we've been working on this plan over the past year, um, talking with thousands of New Yorkers about the future of the waterfront, and we're really excited about it. Um, the plan is um, currently scheduled to be released at the end of uh, 2020. Um, well, that might time that timeline might change a little bit, um, but we're really excited about it. And um, based on our conversations with everyone so far, some of the, the kind of main three themes that we're looking at are uh, resilience, equity, and health. Um, so we're really excited to particularly talk about uh, resilience today with you. Um, although I, I would imagine that these things touch on all three of those themes uh, quite neatly, actually. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And we're not only going to talk about it, we're going to demonstrate it and model it with interactive hands on activities. I'm going to jump right in. Okay? <laughs> All right. Um, I, I listed some materials behind me. You may not be able to, to see it all the way videos work, but they're really simple materials you can find around your house. As I mentioned, a tray. Uh, I put my tray on a blue background to help me see even more uh, uh, what will happen in my model uh, eco ecological system here. And to start with, we're going to set up landfill as much of our city and the waterfront is landfilled, made waterfront there. Uh, when we're outdoors, we use sand a lot. It's really fun uh, to work with the sand, but indoors I recommend you can use a cup of rice in your tray. I'm just going to pour it in on one side. <laughs> And pile it up. I'll, I'll lower the camera and show you in a minute because okay. the next thing that you do as you would in one of our activities is add water. So I'm going to add some water to the tray. We have our landfill which is uh, often loose soil from history as you all might know and you want to fill your tray up about halfway with water. Don't fill it all the way. Uh, you'll make a mess and it can be fun to be messy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you also don't want to spend all your time cleaning up. All right, once you have uh, your rice pushed to one side in your tray and water in your tray, you'll need a way to make waves. I um, use a water bottle often. I have my trusty water bottle from our great oh, educational at partners School. at Harbor School. Billy and Oyster Project has also featured on Waterfront Wednesdays, I know. Right. So I'm going to lower my camera now and show okay. you the first effect of the activity. With the water bottle, all you need to do is push up and down to make waves. You can push harder, you can push softer, you can push faster. And what you'll observe is the rice or the landfill um, eroding away as the wave action is totally coming up onto it as well. Oh, uh, oh. It's all sliding down into the tray. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you can really see, you can really visualize how, how erosion works that way. All right, so Corey, we're going to make this shoreline more resilient, which is something we need to thinking, be thinking about across the communities of New York and New Jersey and around the world as well. So uh, as I uh, lifted the camera, I'm just kind of pushing my landfill rice back into one corner of the tray. <laughs> okay. And this is where the materials get fun. You can find anything around your house that represents uh, green infrastructure or gray infrastructure, which are natural based features and um, man made features that help protect shorelines. Uh, so one of uh, my favorite things to do is to go right to your own shell collection or uh, many people have shells around their houses. So I'm sure you understand uh, what these are. Ooh, some oysters. Oyster shells. As you know, oysters grow in reefs. They make amazing um, marine ecosystems in the water. Uh, and I actually even have one that is a little bit um, built up to show and share. As you can see, uh, how the oysters all grow and uh, uh, live together to create an actual structure that can be protective of shoreline. So you can use shells, um, which as, as a natural feature would represent green infrastructure. Uh, even shells you get at the restaurant, if you enjoy these guys sometime at the restaurant. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Anything like that can be nestled in along your shoreline to try to protect it. Uh, other other opportunities for uh, green infrastructure are based on things like this. Oops, I a little, see this Egg one. Shells. What do those represent? <laughs> um, uh, Eggshells can uh, be used if you'd like to represent um, shell creatures as well. The shells are actually made of the same calcium carbonate. But I love the shape of these eggshells. A dome shape is particularly a resilient structure. And there are partners with City Planning and with Waterfront Alliance that have been able to create what's called fish balls and fish habitat with ecologically prepared concrete, little holes for all the baby fish, uh, places for wildlife to attach. And these man-made structures can, though they're man-made, can be green infrastructure because they promote living things that help our environment. Oh, of course. that's really neat. Uh, other materials you can put in. Uh, maybe I can ask you uh, for green infrastructure, what you might think the sponges. Well, I guess I, I'm imagining the sponge represents like the, the capacity of natural shorelines or of, 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 uh, of other areas to absorb stormwater, um, which is something that the city thinks about a lot in terms of um, as an avenue to improve water quality. So right, it's so right. Thanks, Corey. The, um, <laughs> Uh, natural waterfront, uh, wetlands, non-permeable surfaces um, offer great benefits for protecting a shoreline. All of these nat natural or green infrastructure approaches we've discussed have what's also called co-benefits for the fish and the people that are also at the waterfront, which is a great, amazing addition. Some uh, gray infrastructure or hardening that you can try in your tray include just uh, your favorite pet rock. <laughs> That's great. Um, uh, I, I even do things like sometimes collect the old bricks on the waterfront. If uh, you know, um, clay from the Hudson River was an important brick making component back in the day. Uh, whatever you select, put those in your tray, get your shoreline protected, get your water bottle in hand, and let's try it again. Okay. I, I have. Um, Provided oh, the all the above approach. Yeah, I picked I picked all our green infrastructure, our really important green infrastructure. And as I keep pressing the water and keep pressing the water, you can see that between the reef ball for fish habitat and the oyster reef, my landfill is very well protected from the waves and the surge of the potential uh, water yeah. events in your community. That is a really nice illustration of the effectiveness of of living shorelines and green infrastructure. Thanks, Corey. Thanks. Um, <laughs> uh, take a take a minute uh, just to use my towel here. Um, but maybe you can tell us a little bit about how New York City is planning for real for the floodplain. Welcome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, of course, New York City, as as we're talking about as a coastal city, uh, we have 520 miles of shoreline. 
um, which if you were to take those 520 miles and stretch that out end to end, it would be like the distance from here to Columbus, Ohio. Um, so we have so much shoreline and it, it, the shoreline is really diverse. We have everything from thousands of acres of, of wetlands to, you know, the like high density um, uh, built up urban areas. And what that means is we have to have kind of different management strategies um, for, for resilience and for planning for sea level rise in these different parts of the city. Um, and um, New York City has, you know, we have uh, over 400,000 people living in the floodplain. Um, and so, of course, the, the, um, what this means is that we have to be thinking very proactively about resilience planning. And we do that through a number of different ways. Sometimes we use the tools of zoning and, and land use um, to do things like enabling um, building owners to build buildings more uh, resiliently. And then we also are thinking about infrastructure and shorelines. And I think this is just a perfect illustration of how effective green infrastructure and living shorelines can be um, in providing resilience to storms and also all these co-benefits like, like habitat and everything else. So it's really exciting to hear. Um, yeah. Can I ask you one more question, Corey? Did of you ever course. try an activity? Sorry, did you ever try an activity like this when you were in school? <laughs> I did not, and I wish I had had that opportunity because it seems really cool. Um, but for me, it was certainly a, like a, a passion for water and a passion about water and about climate change that you know led me to um, pursuing a, a degree in city planning and becoming a waterfront planner. So I just really appreciate you um, like showing this in such a hands-on and, and fun way. Thank you for helping us make connections for how this can really help our city and get our own uh, people and students involved, potentially even moving into jobs like you have as well to yeah. have a true resilient city. Totally. Can I tell you about some other things going on in education and resilience, Corey? Yes, please do. We're really excited at Waterfront Alliance to be, be presenting our resilience education programs this week with Department of City Planning and Waterfront Wednesday, and also with the New York State Marine Education Association, NISMIA.org, use their initials, uh, where there are listings of uh, many online free youth education programs about our harbor this week. We're uh, focusing on New York Harbor this week as a lead up to World Oceans Day, uh, which is Monday next week, June 8th, uh, when there will be many online programs focusing on marine uh, concerns around the world as well. So oh, wow. uh, if, if you love what we're doing here, definitely uh, tune in for programs with NISMIA and Billion Oyster Project on Thursday and Friday. This work with our education programs is only one part of a larger community campaign at Waterfront Alliance called Rise to Resilience. For our city to be resilient and just, it'll be very important that communities from around the region come together to learn and advocate and share what will make their communities more resilient. I love this photo because our friends at the waterfront love engaging in this hands-on education, like uh, programs yeah. like this. Yeah. Even though we can't do that now, I'm so excited we were able to share it uh, virtually with you all today. And I'm very excited to also share the Rise to Resilience Coalition because I believe that's one way we can help address the full spectrum of concerns that waterfront communities are facing about the challenges that are happening, not just on their waterfronts, but throughout their communities through advocacy and understanding and coming together to share a common voice. So I hope I can uh, see you all at future uh, events like this. And thank you, Corey. Of course, thanks so much for joining us, Maggie. Thanks for that exciting hands-on demonstration and um, hope you'll be able to join us again for another Waterfront Wednesday in the future. Thanks very much.